Annyeonghaseyo. Konnichiwa. Ni hao. Shalom. And mabuhay. This is Group 2 and welcome aboard. Today, we are going to share our knowledge about cruise, leisure, and recreation tourism. So what are you waiting for? Let's go! Maupay na adlaw! Ako ngaran kay Maika. Now, I am here to enlighten you guys on what cruise ship is. So basically, cruise is a luxury vessel that is used to take passengers on a pleasure voyage and a journey that is as much part of the experience as the various destinations on the way. Traveling in a cruise is very refreshing in a way that it is a mode of enjoyment and recreation which relaxes the mind and replenishes energies to a great extent. And as a matter of fact, um, when you are traveling in a cruise, it is like you bringing your own community while traveling and while waiting for you to land or dock in the destination that you've dreamed of. So these ocean liners with luxurious services, they are being offered what came to be known as line voyages. Now, because of the long journey, which at best would be no less than days. So to compare them with airline, airline will bring you to point A to point B with a shorter period of time. So when we say cruise lines or when we travel with cruise lines, it also brings you from point A to point B with a much longer period of time. Paghinay pirmi, malakat na ako, ayo ayo. Hi everyone! Before I start, let me first introduce myself. I am Jeline Alvi V. Balgoba and I will be discussing the history of cruise tourism. Let's get started! So the cruise industry is a modern phenomenon but it rooted from the early years of the 19th century. So as travel by ship is the only means of travel overseas. The Duke of Bridgewater was initiated to start water transport services from Manchester to London in the year 1772. So as the years go by, cruise ships became more casual with the ability to dress up for dinner and to relax luxury. So they began to tour the Caribbean islands. So modern cruising didn't become popular until after the airing of the Love Boat in the year 1977. So in the year 1980s, some large ships were converted into luxury liners, offering holidays to those people who have money and time for traveling. So many cruise lines have been placed for scheduled liner services. So we all know that in today's time, the cruise industry is the fastest growing segment in the world tourism market. And all the tour operators now include cruises in their tour packages. And that's all that I can share in the history of cruise tourism. Thank you for listening. Once again, I am Jeline Aldi V. Balcoba. Hi! A pleasant morning to everyone. My name is Crystal May Enriquez. Today, I will be sharing with you what I have learned in our prelim lecture. So when we said travel by ship, remember it is a cruise ship represent a specialized type of resort for cruise ships or nothing more than floating resort. And it was 1840s, the steamship era had started. Sir Samuel Connor, the pioneer of first transatlantic scheduled liner tribes at that time. This is the introduction of intercontinental commercial airline service precipitated the rapid decline in the use of ships as a scheduled passenger transportation mode. And when we said cruising has taken the place of scheduled liner services, Ships originally built for ocean crossings do not make the best cruise ships. Ocean liners were large and heavy built to withstand the riders of the Atlantic Ocean. As a result, the fuel costs were great. As cruising took off the lines, built ships specially for cruising, the ships were smaller, 800 to 850 passengers and 20,000 tons lighter, with smaller cabins, large decks and space and public areas and a smaller ratio or stop for passenger fuel costs were also reduced by spending time in more ports a move that satisfied a passenger that would be all for today 
I hope that you have learned something from me. Thank you and have a nice day! Hello! This is Mary Grace Bonyan. I'll be sharing my insights and learnings about the cruise experience. The cruise experience is one of the unforgettable moments that we love to look back. It gives a different feeling, a fulfilling one. In the cruise experience, I learned that it's a simple topic. But every single piece of information about it is worth knowing. Because it represents a real-life situation. We have our own perception and interpretation based on the services, experiences, things that we get as a passenger. Most of us think of it as a place for entertainment, where all excitement can be free to release. Some may consider it as reliable and need-based customer because their number one priority is to give high satisfaction on services and accommodation. We can also think of it as an expensive journey, a worth risk of money. Some non-passengers think of it as a crumb space, not physically but mentally, for having phobias and panic inside a cruise ship. It could also be an elitist. A voyage perfect for an old couple as a target market. And finally, could be a cause of motion sickness for some inexperienced travelers or some sensitive travelers. Well, all of these are part of experiencing the cruise. It is possible and it is okay to have a different perspective about it. The most important thing is everyone is free to experience or explore the beauty of the cruise industry. Hello everyone, I am Christine and I will explain what I have learned in changing trends. My key takeaway from this is on how to invest in and establish more companies in the field of cruise for business growth by patronizing small and medium scale business through this changing trend, more customers will get attracted and enticed to avail services in the ship. Moreover, it is also a good opportunity to democratize in the market service of ship to adapt with the recent changes and trends in and the out of the cruise industry having a good quality service and product is a must to grow with a business benefit the cruise always share your thoughts about what you purchase or give your good experience about the product also give them a new an idea what's the new trends this year or in the future here Hi everyone, my name is Adrian Nicole Arbarato and today I'm going to discuss about the things that I learned in cruise, leisure, and recreation tourism. So one of the things that I learned is that there are different classifications of cruise. So the first one is resort. So this is just like a holiday resort but on water. The next one is premium. So this is just like any other cruise but this one offers upscale features. The next one is Luxury, so this offers the finest services and gives attention to every detail. The next one is Nature Specialty Cruise, which caters guests with distinct expertise. And the last one is Value or Traditional Cruise, that just lets their passenger enjoy the traditions of the ship. So this might not be a popular opinion, but I think that cruise is just as great as airlines. Hi guys, I'm Alexa and today we will be discussing about the decks of the ship. First of all, what is deck of the ship? A deck is a permanent covering that covers the ship compartment. It is also the primary or upper deck of a ship. It is a horizontal structure that forms as the roof of the hull. There are actually six types of deck of the ship. First up is the Lido deck. Lido deck is definitely known for the public outdoor swimming pool and a place where we can lie under the sun. There are some awesome features that we can find here in this video deck, such as fountain show, zip line, built-in large TV screen for the movies, and more. Second is the promenade deck. It is an actually outdoor walkway that circles the ship, where people can freely stroll around the ship, and it actually serves as a lifeboat boarding area in case of an emergency. The third one is the lobby deck. This deck serves as a lounge area of a cruise ship or the main atrium, where the guest services and restaurant are placed. 
The fourth type of deck of the ship is the sky deck. It is actually the highest part of the cruise ship where you can find the spa, center court, jogging truck, and more. The fifth type of deck is the sun deck. This deck is below the sky deck, which is basically where you can find the bar, hot tubs, bandstand, children outdoor area, and more. The stateroom here in this deck consists of ocean view, balcony, and a suite. And lastly, the type of the deck is the Atlantic deck. This deck contains photo gallery, shops, panoramic lifts, theater, casino, restaurants, and more. Next up, we will be discussing about the rooms of the cruise ship. First one is the Empress. An Empress deck room consists of two twin beds that can convert into a king size and a single sofa bed. The interior of this room, it actually has a picture window, obstructive view, 185 square feet to 190 feet. You can have your own private balcony and a wearful bath and a walk-in closet. Next up is the river. This cabin is actually the most economical choice on the ship. It can only consist two to three people and a limited number of these rooms are available and it should be booked very early. Third one is the panorama. The room of the panorama deck is placed on the 11th floor of the cruise ship. Some of the rooms of the panorama deck is that they have private access to the spa and comes with an exclusive spa amenities. And lastly, the veranda room. This cabin is actually placed on the deck 8 of the cruise ship, wherein it is more upper class than the Empress one. This cabin can have its, its own private wrap around balcony and has two twin beds that can also convert into king and each room is approximately 185 to 190 square feet. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Sarai Sangalang. Today I'm going to share to all of you what I discovered about the services and facilities of different cruise ships. Admit it or not, one of the most awaited part of riding a cruise ship that is worth of our time and effort is to explore the unique and majestic facilities and to experience the high quality services of different cruise ships that is offered to satisfy the passengers' need. Cruise liners pamper the passengers' need with the best of hospitality and service such as entertainment, dining, finances, medication, fitness and beautification facilities and services. I am amazed how cruise lines make sure to offer great facilities and services that will leave long-lasting impressions on the passengers with their whole commitment whether they receive something from them or none. That's all. Gracias. Thank you. Magandang 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 araw mga kababayan. Ako nga pala si Ria Nicole Firme, bayan ng Kalatagan, ang Pinagmulan. Ngayon ay ating tatalakayin health, safety, and securities. Ano nga ba ito? Health, safety, and securities, number one, Centers for Disease Control. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention introduced a ship sanitation program during the 1970s to address the growing number of outbreaks abroad cruise ships. Number two, sanitation program. Under the supervision of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, vessels with over 13 passengers must go through a sanitation program inspection before they can enter the country. Number three, security increases the complexity and cost of planning for air travel. It also adds to the waiting times of for passengers and crew, and it in, can then, and it can take a while to get through a security checkpoints. Paano ba yan? Hanggang dini na lang ako. Maraming salamat. Hanggang sa muli. Hello everyone. I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Ansel Karin M. Asuncion, and I will be discussing the critical variables of the cruise about the distribution system and the cruise operators. In the distribution system, to put it another way, when it comes to cruise lines, one may say that the market is segmented into three different categories, cruise line product focus, customer identity focus, and satisfying demand. And let's move on to the next topic, the cruise operators. Additional cruise lines or brands fight for market share. Cruise lines frequently lease or own their vessels in which case they create travel and merchandising itineraries or commodities. All costs connected with operating a cruise ship such as gasoline, 
port fees and custom taxes paid foreign governments are considered fixed. To increase earnings, cruise ship operators will want to reduce this cost while maintaining a high level of service. Larger companies have significantly higher chances of having supplies such as fuels and consumables. When cost agreements result in cost reduction, they are frequently huge. And before the internet, cruise lines relied on travel agents to organize bookings. Also, cruise companies rely on printed brochures to assist them in marketing voyages. The purpose of promotional brochures is to persuade customers to book early by generating early season pricing that appears significantly lower than their later season equivalents and then offering discounts for early bookings. Good day everyone! How are you? My name is Samana Gonzalez Cubaco and my topic for today will be the critical variables of cruise in determining the cruise ship profit potential. This is a continuation topic together with my partner Asuncion Ansel Corin. And today I have three things to discuss. The first one is market segment, second one is the travel agent, and the third is the alliances. So, market segment. In market segment, we have six segments in the cruiser market include. We have restless baby boomer, enthusiastic baby boomer, luxury seeker, consummate shoppers, explorer, and the last one is the ship webs. Marketing professionals approach each segment differently, but only after they fully understand the needs, the lifestyle, demographic, and personality of the of the consumer and also an easy way to get the interest of the people so basically it is very important for you to know your target market so the second one is the travel agent so travel agent is the person who are engaged in selling and arranging the transportation accommodation tour and trips of a traveler and you know what Many agents can offer you incredible perks like complimentary bottles of wine, a voucher for a special meal, and many discounts as you request. Travel agents who are specialized in arranging and bookings together with a strong alliances and other cruise companies, they are the ones who support their travel agent through the training, sales events, and marketing materials. Third one, for the alliances, the cruise operators may decide to form alliances in order to create more attractive package or to create additional reasons for customers' loyalty. So in the business, we also need development. So that will be all. Thank you. Bye-bye! Hi again! My name is John Vic Angelo Corpus Suriano. Accommodation Accommodation in cruise is very important because guests needed to have a comfortable and safe place to stay. It will serve as their home while at the cruise. Managing operation. Managing the operation, knowing the cruise behavior and attitude will make you know what type of person you will work with. And it will help you to know how they handle a task given to them and how they can help customer and also their workmates. Cruise destination. Cruise destination, the cruise itself is a destination. It's more fl like floating luxury resorts, but there is a lot of stopovers that you may enjoy and encourage a new people with a different language and culture. Good day everyone! I am Maria Michaela Elizabeth S. Longi from Bachelor Science Tourism Management, Section TM5A. So what I learned, topic is all about the importance financial regions relevant to cruise ships, like managing services. Officers, managers, crew, and staff must all be sufficiently trained. And also, managing food and beverage for casting needed. Quantities and identify expected changes to routine. And lastly, managing facilities. It is extremely important to define a set of financial ranges that can be used to analyze across the entire industry regardless of operations. 
that's all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My topic is variable profit in a cruise line. Variable profit in a cruise line depends on the passenger who gets bored in every trip. There's a time na wala masyadong sumasakay na passenger sa cruise ship. So, ang mangyayari, mapaba yung profit. At may mga panahon din naman na almost sold out ang ticket. At mas lalo yung malaki ang profit dahil sa mga onboard activities like zip line, wall climbing, basketball, bowling, surfboarding, so on and so forth. And next is the most profitable cruise line. First is the Carnival Cruise Line with 47% market share, followed by the Royal Caribbean with 22% market share. And you know guys, both companies are operates under the numerous brand names in cruise line industry. That's all, thank you. Hello, I'm Winali Rivera and I learned that there are factors affect the cruise ship fares and those are first the air travel. It overwhelmed the transatlantic passenger ship and now it is not to prosper in the form of cruise ship. Second is the time of the year, which means is it high, shoulder or low season. Third, the length of the trip. The fares vary on how long a passenger will stay on board. It is also a factor that affect the cruise ship fares in what type of a cabin a passenger will use. Also, it varies by what is included and not included in a package that determines the ranges of fares. So, the cruise ship operators promote to lure passengers in use of advertising campaigns, air and cruise packages, and the introduction of inexpensive cruises. Good day, everyone! My name is Katie Ann Datumangil, a third year tourism student from University of the East Manila. And I am here in front of you because in this video, I will be discussing to you the topic about merchandise cost that I have learned from our subject Cruise, Leisure, and Recreational Tourism. So, without further ado, let's get started. Do these words come out in your mind when I said the word merchandise cost? Well, merchandise cost or cost of merchandise sold is a product or goods that have been sold by a wholesaler and retailers. and. Do you know that they do not manufacture their own goods? Instead, they are buying from third parties and sell it to their customers. An example of this is a duty-free shopping on cruise ship. And do you know that the product that they sell in duty-free are the goods that they usually sell in that country? And this product entered that country without local import taxes. Before I end this video, I will leave this trivia to you that in order for us to remain duty-free, we must leave that country immediately after we bought a product from there. That's all. Thank you. Hi everyone! My name is Miyoki S. Villacorta and I am going to share with you what I have learned during the prelims lecture in cruise tourism. One of my dream jobs is to work in the cruise because I am amazed on how this stuff works and how they provide service to the clients with their heart in everything that they do. We all know that there are many items inside cruise that are popular to the tourists and most of them are in the shopping area because we all know that everyone loves shopping! And to be honest, there are many great deals to be had. Duty Free Shops is one of the best shops that offer this. Then, we will have this question. What are the popular items that are usually bought in the cruise ship? Join me as I share to you what these are. If you want to buy a souvenir for family and friends or pick up something specially just for you, you can find some great things in the cruise ship. Now, to start, Due to heavily discounted prices, these items have become some of the most popular items for purchase in onboard duty-free shops. First, alcohol. Alcohols in cruise ship has wide variety available in duty-free shops. You can find deals that suit you from premium vodka to creamy liquors. Next is cigarettes. For the smoker tourists out there, you will love this. It's always readily available on duty-free shops, the cigarettes, and the price of cigarettes varies depending on where you travel. However, as a guideline, cruise ship duty-free shops will sell 10-pack bundles for 14 pounds or around 1,000 peso. Next is jewelry. Cruises are usually stuck with a luxurious display of fine jewelry and costume jewelry. 
and um, some designer watches, handbags, as well as sunglasses. Next is Apple products. You can find iPods, iPods, MacBook Pros, and more. And take note, the quantities are limited. So if you have an item in mind, decide fast and make sure that you get it early in your cruise to get the product that you want. However, most Apple stores on seas are available on celebrity cruises. Next one is perfume. Perfume is one of the most popular products to buy when it comes to cruise shopping. Great deals await across the whole host of top brands from Armani to Calvin Klein and you can buy your signature scents for less than the original price. Lastly is the makeup and skincare. Makeup and skincare have become a popular choice for cruise tourists. With uh, the scan across the wide choices of popular brands like Clinique, Lancome, and many more. Um, all the reason for tourists gaining interest on them. That ends my presentation. That's all. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone, I'm Brandy Alexi Villar and today I'm going to give you 5 terminologies about cruise. The first one is Adventure Cruise. Adventure Cruise is an expedition cruise catering to those seeking adventurous itineraries. Experiences at the destinations include wildlife in its natural habitat, beautiful scenery, snorkeling, kayaking, or hiking. The second one is Boost Cruise, a cruise that features free or low-cost alcohol and where the theme is partying and drinking both on the ship and in port. The third one is Expedition Cruise. Cruises that cater to those seeking more adventure and off the beaten path itineraries with a focus in on the experiences at the destination rather the onboard activities. The fourth one is Hosted Cruise, a sailing where a knowledgeable person Often a travel agent travels with a group of and provides support and expertise both on the ship as well as the shore. The last one is cruise to nowhere, a short sailing in which a ship will cruise in open waters for one or more days without reaching a destination. Naimbag abigat ni Nyayo Amin, my name is Mika Garcia from Tourism Management 5A. What I've learned in cruise, leisure, and recreation tourism is there are different terminologies in cruise. Number one, forward, toward the front of the ship. Number two, funnel, a smokestack on the cruise ship. Number three, bow, the front of the ship. Number four, captain, the officer or the person in the command of the ship. You will usually have the opportunity to meet the captain at the various events during your cruise. Holiday Market During the holidays, River Cruise Line offer itinerary of holiday or Christmas market that features town square feastone with the traditional sight, smell, and things of the Christmas and holiday inside the cabin located in the interior of the ship without window there are the least expensive cabin on the ship and the best for cruise and for the people like to sleep late inside the passage a popular seagoing route along the u.s canadian coast extending from seattle to skagway alaska Hello everyone, I'm Debbie Hebres from Tourism Management 5B. Let's now discuss some of cruise terminologies. First, anchor. It is usually made up of metal chain, rope, or a combination of it. Anchor is used to keep the cruise ship in a stationary position. Next, cabin steward, a person that serves the needs of the passengers and also they are responsible for cleaning the rooms of the passengers. Next, Cruise Director, they are the one who is responsible for the activities and entertainment on board for the passengers. Cruise Director, also the host when there is a special event. Next, Debarkation, it means action where the passengers and also the crew leaving the ship. Next, Family Cabin, a cabin in a cruise ship which accommodate more than three passengers. Next, Group Travel, it refers to a group of people that book for a travel. And last is the Itinerary. Itinerary 
schedules that includes all the things that the passengers would do during the travel. Thank you! Naim bag nga aldaw kanyayo amin apo. I am Leika Oparingit from the home of 100 Islands and 100 Flavors, Pangasinan. Today, I'll be sharing with you some terminologies that I've learned from our past lectures. So, let's get started! The first term that I learned is the word casino. In my own understanding, when we say casino, it pertains to gambling and entertainment. Most cruise ships with a casino offers tournament of some kind. Most common are slot and blackjack. The second one is the word disembark. To my way of thinking, disembark means an act of getting off the cruise at your destination. The third one is the word enrichment. Well, I think enrichment stands for the programs that let the guests sign up for short courses in arts, cooking, photography, and other subjects usually taught by art instructors, guest lecturers, and of course the experts. We also have the word gratuitous. It is a sum of money customarily given by a client to a certain service worker for the service they performed. Well, most mainstream cruise lines have automatic gratuity. Lastly is the word home port, sometimes referred to as embarkation point or turnaround point. Some ships leave from or return to the same port all year round, making that location their home. Hello sa inyo nga tanan! May nga aga, hapon, kagabi sa inyo. I am Jaya Chilicot, Alicante, Manala. And I would like to share to all of you what I have learned during the prelims lecture. These are the some examples of emergency codes. The first one is 3030, mean to clean the mess or clean up record. Next, alpha, a medical emergency or someone had an accident. Next, bravo, is a fire emergency. Next, bright star, someone is dead or have an emergency. Next, charlie, 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 security threat, or example of this is a bomb threat. Next, code bravo, a fire and you should tell the place, example, Fire in the lobby. Next, code delta. The typhoon damaged our bow. Bow mean front of the ship. Next, code Oscar. Our one team fall in the ship. Next, code Papa. Pollution or environmental spill. Next, code red. Someone have a sick. Example, coronavirus. Next, code yellow. Not too serious problem. Next, code Shara. One member fall and need a stretcher. Next, echo. The ship is drifting, often caused by strong winds, came from typhoon. And lastly, fallen star means death. And that's all about some examples of emergency codes. Kabay pa nga may nabuol ka mo, kag natunan sa akin nga ginhambal. Salamat gil sa pagpamati, kag halong ka mo nga tanan. Good day, I'm Brian Yomana and I will show you or expose the secret codes used in the cruise ship. Let's go. Code Adam. Code Adam means there's a child missing on board. If the parents seek for help with the crew member, they will call it immediately to the station and they will say the code Adam. Code Baby Ruth. Code Baby Ruth is used if you saw a poo, poo in the pool. It is disgusting if the people see it, so we need to report it as fast as we can. Same with the code Winnie. Code Orange. Code arrange it applies for illness outbreak or infection. There may be a following orders like closing the pools or quarantine the person. So orange is early stages of norovirus infection. Code Kilo. Kilo is a general sign for crew member to report emergency to the station. Sometimes they call it Kilo, Kilo, Kilo. Mr. Mob. It is used for the people or the passenger or crew member has fallen overboard can also be signaled with three prolonged blasts on the ship's whistle and general alarm. They also use Oscar for this. Priority 2 Priority 2 make use of it if it's a water taking in the ship. Like if you're on board, report it because it will cause badly on the ship. Imagine. PBI PBI means public vomiting incident. It's just a national incident because they're in the ship. Also, they are traveling, so expect that there's a shaky part because of the bodies of water. Code Peril Peril is followed by a location where guests vomit. It's for cleaning the dirt and mess. So, PVI Peril Red Parties 
This code is about fire emergency. So if you saw a possible fire or it will cause a fire, report it to alert the group. Operation Rising Star. Unfortunately, this is used or called to the station if the person died on board.